continuing on then about what's happening in the in the uh, really extraordinary division where you have the federal government you know basically fighting with the states over so many issues from Obamacare to illegal immigration um, I thought I wanted to give you a, a, a sense of what what is happening out there in our in our legislation and, and in the Alabama legislation for example I the, the model legislation that ABC put out, as I said, focused on issues like um, can you can you deduct tax taxes for uh, for the wages that you would pay to illegal immigration? It's very hard for the federal government to say that's not a state function. Thing, things like business licensing. This is where the, the <coughs> states are starting to pick up on things that are sort of t starting to adapt to the to the to the challenges they saw in the courts and trying to stay away from things that uh, are getting them caught up in, 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 in court challenges. Surprisingly, um, several things are the most controversial. I don't know why, but there's this great interest, it doesn't quite strike my fancy, but obviously it does strike a lot of other people's fancy, of having illegal immigrations carry a registration card. And I don't know, this is an old idea. It goes back, there was a Pennsylvania lawsuit, I think in the 1940s, in which Pennsylvania said, under state Pennsylvania law, you have to carry, you have to register, not with the federal government, but with Pennsylvania, and you have to carry an alien registration document issued by Pennsylvania, not, not by the federal government, and that went up to the Supreme Court and Pennsylvania lost. And that was one of the main reasons why the Arizona law was stopped in the, in the federal legislation last year, was that there was this existing uh, precedent like this. And it may surprise people that there really is a federal, a federal um, statute, was it 1304E of the Immigration and National Naturalization Act, that says under federal law, if you're, an, an Ill, or if you're not an American citizen, you must register. That bothers a lot of people, but it is the law. And you have to carry your registration card or have it accessible or something like that. This this has been a big cause celeb. It, like I say, it doesn't, it doesn't excite me that much, but it's been where a lot of the activity has been. And most most of the statutes that are out there in the states include that, and they're being blocked. Um, they're saying now, like Alabama said, we're not. You, you don't have to register with us, like like Alabama, like Pennsylvania did. You have to register with the federal government, but the state law, where the state is going to enforce it. You, you don't register with the federal government. You let them administer it, but we were going to require you to do that. That may not work because of the previous, the previous thing. And one of the big concerns is that all of this immigrant, all this enforcement, you could say, well, if you are a legal <coughs> immigrant here, you're going to be burdened. You're going to have, you're going to be held for 24 hours. You're going to be detained. You're going to, and, and you've done nothing wrong, and you're not illegal, but it's going to impact you. That's where a lot of the, a lot of the concern is. So what's interesting is the focus on things that are traditional state. <coughs> state issues. Alabama has this amazing thing that the courts will not enforce a contract with an illegal alien. So if you enter into a private contract as a private business and you come to court and you say, I want to enforce either way this contract, the courts won't enforce it. They say, go out of here, we don't want to hear it. Which is kind of creative and, and interesting. Although they say they have to know or you should have known. Now that sounds rather odd actually. But, but one thing people may not realize is that here in Virginia, a, a, comp, a foreign company from another country or another state doing, regularly doing business in Virginia can't come into a Virginia court until they register with the Virginia State Corporation Commission. So it's not that odd, although it, it sounds draconian. Um, they, there's, they're making it a crime to, um, to do business with the, with the state of Alabama if you're an illegal alien. Again, they're getting really creative about some of these things. And they include in that getting a driver's license, uh, a vehicle permit, you know, a, a license plate, um, other things. For some reason, they, they exempted marriage, marriages. I don't know why. I guess just a soft touch. Um, so, but but they, they're making it, you know, any kind of contracting with the, or activity with the state government, you can't do it if you're an illegal, illegal immigrant. Um, and some of the stuff, like I said, that was that was blocked with the Arizona law was not blocked with in by the by the Eleventh Circuit. They also handle, for example, if you if you're caught, you know, I, I go through the courts here to try to find clients, and 
I can't tell you how many driving without a license cases I see in the court system, and I, I think, you know, do I want to bother? Because they're probably long gone, you know, especially, I hate to think, I hate to look at the ethnicity of the name, but I think you see all these driving without a license cases. Um, what they've done in Alabama is, is they say that if you're caught driving without a license, they will hold you um, until they determine if you're here, here legally or not. And they can do that because you've already committed a crime. So they, they designated a flight risk, whereas they couldn't just stop you on the street. If you have committed a crime, they can they can then hold you up, to, but they but only uh, only for 24 hours, and um, they'll use anything like any any kind of documentation that you're here illegally to take care of that. Now, the most controversial thing that happened in Alabama, though, was really misunderstood. They they had you know, it's probably too clever by half. They had the, uh, the schools, the public schools, require to check people's birth certificates to see if the person, to see what the person's country of origin is, to see if they were born here or not. Now they claim they were just doing this for statistical reporting um, for, for their English as a Second Language or Bilingual Education programs. They prohibited the use of this information to identify anybody individually or to, to take any action on it, but nobody believes them. And so it became this gigantic, the, the most controversial part of this development was that the public schools are now going to be used for immigration enforcement. And apparently thousands of Hispanic children have just disappeared from public schools in the last um, couple weeks, they, they say. And so even though that was blocked by the 11th Circuit, and they claim that it was just, it was just for the purpose of of statistical reporting, but it still got everybody extremely hot, which is part of the reason why I think that they um, people were so shocked when the when the law was was, was allowed to, to go into effect. So now, in terms of in terms of the policy and other things too, I wonder, you know, can we really be a country if we can't control our borders? And and I and I know it, it is so hard to to separate whether we should allow a certain number of people to come in and under certain circumstances and that sort of thing from whether there should be no controls at all. And I, and I don't know why, but so many of these people who talk about it, you, you wouldn't believe the things they said about Alabama. It's like the second racist, you know, just like that, the, self, the racist actions of Alabama in the 1960s and everything like that, just because we want the law, you know, the rule of law enforced. But, but for some reason, there's this desire to simultaneously scream about jobs going overseas, but to let them all come here and take our jobs here. American, American's economy and our economic security is very much at stake. It, it is amazing how many people come here from terror sponsoring countries, and we just have no idea who is here. I tell you, if I were a terrorist, if there were an evil version of me, I'd have no problem with <coughs> Any nuclear bomb that we might, you know, might exist or anything else. Through the, I mean, I could do it ten times over. 